But the real joy for me um, is that I, I get to see other people shine and that's the teacher part of me. Richard. Ladies and gentlemen, Richard Forte presents the next episode with the one and only Rob McCubbin. Did I say that right? <laughs> you did. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one and only? No, the, I'm well, now you know. <laughs> Come on, you know you're the one and only. <laughs> uh, as an agent or the one and only as uh, the drama teacher? Or what? The, the, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the guy who's making things happen right now okay. in the entertainment industry <laughs> around here. Yeah, uh, trying. Yeah, Rob, yeah. I would love to, you to tell us what this the nexus talent agency is what is the nexus so the nexus talent agency started off as a north star talent and it was under the control of jim clarko for uh jim's probably doing it for at least 10 years and uh i briefly mentioned to jim at a, a party at one point i said well you know if you're ever ready to retire i'll take it over but i was i was kind of joking but i wasn't really and Josh Bainbridge, who's uh, who's a friend of mine and also a former student, uh, when he was talking to Jim, he said, "I don't think Rob was really joking." So last February, uh, Jim uh, decided to retire, and uh, I took over in March. I was sort of expecting to have more time to prepare, uh, but I took over in March, and uh, and of course then COVID hit. Um, but what it's allowed me to do is to really think about. Uh, the direction that we want to go with the agency, uh, which uh, casting sites we want to belong to in order to be able to submit people. It's allowed us to, uh, to work on the website. Uh, it's allowed us to figure out um, which people are going to be available for uh, background opportunities and which people are interested in traveling to Toronto, Ottawa, and Montreal for larger uh, productions. So it's made... It's given me a lot of time to kind of figure out uh, what the next version of this agency is. And we changed it to the Nexus Talent Group. And the real reason behind that was because when you called it North Star Talent, it, uh, it had the effect of uh, making the Southern Ontario people say, well, it's just for the North. So by calling it the Nexus Talent Group, we, we opened up the door so that we can we can try for for things outside of North Bay and outside of Sudbury. Just a so. quick time out to get everybody to go check out the website right now. Check out the website. <laughs> it is an impressive website and you have an amazing roster of talent. Yes, we do. I was super, yeah. super impressed when I was doing my research to, to prepare for this interview. Yeah, we've got it, some incredibly talented people. Can you give me a little bit of your background? Specific? How did you get into film, television, stage acting? Well, stage acting for me is one of those things. It's funny. I mean, um, Darren's over there. Darren's yeah, Darren's part yeah. of the show because Darren is... <laughs> you can't actually let's, see him, but he's... Out, yeah. I'm, I'm here, We're yeah. going to put a camera on Darren yeah, yeah, yes, very camera. soon. So Darren knows. I've been... Uh, I was a, a drama teacher, but long before that, I mean, I was, I was always doing uh, the same thing that a lot of uh, kids in this town do. I did... Uh, Tauros and I did uh, summer challenge and I ended up doing uh, some drama in university. I did like a English degree with, uh, with some drama and, uh, and in the end uh, I got the job at Woodfield and I'd been teaching there for a number of years. And then I got involved with the North star talent agency by uh, I met Jim actually at uh, outside 100 George's one night and he was like, yeah, McGovern, let's get this thing going. So, uh, so I started auditioning and, uh, and then I met, uh, Derek Dorio and he gave me a chance to do uh, hard rock medical and a couple of episodes of that. And, uh, I got to do this uh, horror movie, which everybody says is, is quite good, but it's, uh, the only time anybody's ever seen it is on the plane on the air Canada plane over going over to Europe or whatever. So it's, I've never been able to find the actual copy of it. Uh, but yeah, and, uh, it was just, it kind of. My former students of people like uh, like Josh and uh, and uh, and those guys, they they were doing it, and then I got involved with doing little projects with them, and also working with um, 
uh, Euro Monestine and those guys up at uh, up at Canador and doing some of those independent pieces as well. And I just sort of figured it out, and I'm still figuring it out. But I'm I definitely think that I've uh, got a really a pretty good handle on what's going on. The if if anybody were going to ask me what my weaknesses, I'd tell you right away. I don't quite understand uh, the world of commercials. Hmm. Uh, the the union rules are similar. The pay, the rate of pay, the structure of pay. So by the way, if you're listening and you know anything about commercials, let me know <laughs> um, because it is, it's different. Yeah. Uh, it has to do with um, whether you are going to be on the web, uh, whether it's going to be shown for seven months and or whether it's going to be in perpetuity or so there's when you're thinking about how you're paying an actor or how an actor is going to how you're going to get commission from an actor the commercial world is very different than the feature film and the sort of episodic world right and uh, so i'm kind of staying where i'm comfortable right now as i'm figuring that out but i have a really good handle i think on the the feature film episodic world so. What's your favorite part about getting into that world? I mean, you don't come from it. You've now, as you're, you're explaining, you're. I think it's the teacher. You've... It's the teacher in me. Yeah. Uh, the the organization aspect of it is interesting. Um, I'm very tech savvy, uh, so I'm able to create uh, you know spreadsheets with uh, searchable criteria. So I've got the entire roster listed on the spreadsheet. And then what I do is I go, I'm looking for a 67 year old male in my roster who can work in Toronto, who currently uh, is able to work as a Toronto local, who also is able to play basketball. And I'm able to do that. And some of the sites that I belong to actually allow me to do that too. But I thought I'm gonna go one step further and actually make that easy for myself. Yours, yeah. So I created that the spreadsheet to do that. And I'm starting to do that now with even with background to have, uh, we are the only agency in, uh, in Northern Ontario that doesn't charge uh, commission on background, but we're going to move in that direction because there are a lot of background opportunities for Northern actors. And, uh, and from a financial standpoint, you know, you can make uh, quite a bit of money as a background actor for doing 10 days of background, but uh, I would be lying if I didn't say I wouldn't mind 20 bucks of everybody's, you know, I mean, that I mean, it not just for I, I, like it has to be you're worth, building a business. It's got to be worth something to me. Right. And uh, but the real joy for me um, is that I I get to see other people shine. And that's the teacher part of me. I, I really enjoyed working with uh, some of our younger uh, actors, our youth actors uh, I signed a bunch of kids after uh, Josh and I had this wonderful opportunity to take part in uh, a workshop with uh, Kelly Lamb uh, in Sudbury and uh, so we saw the kids and as soon as it was over I messaged her and said I would like to see this person this person this I want to get in touch with their parents and I've got some really talented kids and each time they do a tape uh, and I provide them with feedback. They just get better and better and better. And I, a lot of it is, uh, I'm not just the, the agent. I'm the guy who I'm kind of like, I did a lot of reading on this. There are, uh, agents and then there are agent managers and I'm kind of both. So I'm not just dealing with the idea of getting people jobs and then, uh, you know, signing contracts and, and that kind of thing. I'm also in the in the world of I want to I want to say to you, OK, so that was a really good take. But I think what you need to do is you need to earn that moment. And Darren, Darren's heard all this kind of stuff. Like This is the actor in me who's able to say, I need I need this moment to feel real because right now it feels like you're acting. And if I can catch you acting, then what we're doing is well, we're back on stage. We're not in we're not in the film world. And anybody who's done this knows that is the difference um hmm. that stage is about uh an external performance where you know your everything is about your your gestures and and you know it's got to be uh translated to the audience and the best way to put across film is that you're doing all of it with your eyes hmm. right you literally are taking all that energy in your face and you're putting it into your eyes because it's about stillness and 
And so I get a lot of uh, a lot of parents writing to me saying, you know, like my kid's been in dream code or whatever. And I say, that's great. But we're going, there's going to be some training here because you, you really need to understand the difference between being outwardly demonstrative of, of, yeah. of an emotion and what it means to pull back. And again, you know, I, I keep pointing to Darren. It's just, I taught him. So I just, yeah. I just know. Um, and he's awesome. Yeah, he is awesome. <laughs> and, uh, but it's something that long before I started working with the, with actors in this agency, it's something that I've always worked for as a drama teacher as well. I'm, I'm much more interested in a grounded Brian Cranston kind of pull it all back kind of performance. Right. Um, and so that's what I'm working with now. And it's amazing how many casting directors will say in the submission notice, uh, I am, we're looking for a grounded, realistic portrayal. Uh, please, you know, don't send this up. You know, even if it's comedic, don't laugh at your own joke. You know, like understand the audience is going to do the work. You, you don't have to push. And, and it makes a big difference. And, and anybody who's done it, like they, they really come to understand there is a very big difference between being on stage and being on film. So what do you, is that the answer to that question? That's an amazing answer <laughs> to that question. Rob, yeah. so what do you, when you see the spark, what is it that, is, is there a common thread when you say, oh, that person, I'd like to, I'd really like to follow up yes, with them. Or, so totally, what with, especially that? with those kids. Uh, what, uh, what I saw were uh, people who were fully alive uh, the entire time. Uh, a lot of times what happens is, uh, and this isn't just in film, this is even on stage, uh, an actor delivers a line and then what they're doing is they're waiting for the opportunity to speak again. It's not about understanding that, that it's more about reaction mm. and, and existing and and it, this gets like, deeply philosophical, but basically... Uh, Let's go there. I okay, well, one of my... One of my favorite acting gurus uh, is a man by the name of Sanford Meisner. And, uh, and I took uh, the Meisner technique of acting when I was in uh, Oregon. I did a, mm -hmm. a, a course. And then I brought it back and taught it to my students because I, I truly believe it's, it's one of the greatest acting techniques there is. And it basically has to do with the idea of immersing yourself in the imaginary circumstances. And the difference between the sort of the typical method acting of the sort of the American cinema uh, like the Pacinos of the world and stuff, is that uh, you're not necessarily focusing on a character uh, and looking at it as, oh, well, you know, my dog died, uh, and so I'm going to use the death of my dog to move me through this, this moment of emotional trauma. Instead, what Meisner is about is, uh, <coughs> excuse me, looking at a... Uh, the emotional core of a scene as something that is yet to come to pass. So mm. you're alive because what you do is you decide uh, the character is, I don't know, distraught, yeah. uh, similar again, emotionally distraught. And you put yourself into a position where you say, if I were to hear right now, if somebody were to call me on the phone and say, uh, your mother's just gone into the hospital. Now I got to act. Now I got to move and I got to let it breathe through me and all of that. So when I'm watching these kids and they're not doing anything like that yet, uh, but they, they do do some really amazing stuff. When I was watching these kids during Kelly Lamb's workshop, uh, the kids that I knew uh, we wanted to talk to again were those ones who um, they weren't just waiting for their chance to talk they were listening to what was being said to them and altering their response mm. based on what was being given to them, which is, which is acting. Yeah. But again, it sounds so simple, but lots of people can't do it because what people do is they deliver their line and they literally, they're sitting there thinking to themselves, I, I can't remember what I need to say, or I'm going to try and say it this way. Or last night when I said it this way, my mom thought it was really cool. So I'm going to do it the same way again. And again, you know, I keep going back to Darren, but, but we've done all of this, and what's really fascinating is uh, you can feel the emptiness of that kind of performance because you're watching a show on a on a Tuesday night, and if you happen to, you know, if you're one of those people who you know decide to go see it three times, um, you see the same show 
but you're aware of which actors are doing a Wednesday night show and which actors are doing the same show as Tuesday night, right? And that Interesting. that is, I think, even more painfully obvious yeah. when you're watching it on camera. Because the magic is the presence. Yeah, and if, when you're not in that, when you're not present, when you're there, there isn't listening and active listening, like not just you know, like oh, are you coming to the end yeah, of the line? Just, like you're waiting for yeah, that. Yeah. You're waiting for the moment where like that la that cue line comes, but the person says something to you where the cue line is halfway in the middle of it because you know all of a sudden the line just comes out differently. But you're still waiting for that word, and you're kind of like, oh, <laughs> that's my turn to talk. <laughs> And that, that, like, that doesn't work. And that you can see that on so people. You can actually so you're see them up, do it. So you're picking up on who energetically is doing that naturally. Has that, you, has you said that, it. It's present. It like those present. kids are present. Yeah. Like, and, and when you watch them do their tapes, uh, they're, not, um, they're not doing like a monologue where uh, they've figured out how they're going to say this word you know, when you do, you know, you think of like the Dale Carnegie speech world, right? Where you like, you, yeah. you underline a line, you say, oh, I'm going to say this and you do that, which is great. And it's really wonderful when you're in the world of rhetoric and you're trying to uh, motivate people. But when you're sitting around a kitchen table, you're not sitting there thinking to yourself, I'm going to say this with more emphasis than the other. Yeah. So, so when kids uh, plan their attack, uh, I can tell. And again, that, that's the drama teacher in me. And, yeah. and, and, and these parents are like writing to me going, oh my God, like my daughter's never done anything like this before. And I, yeah. I'm like, great. You know, like, <laughs> that's, it's awesome. Um, and I mean, I do it with, the, with our adult people as well. But the, again, the trick there right, is I've got to, there's got, I got to temper it a little bit because there's that wonderful sense of ego that people who are already in this agency would have that, well, you know, like why, why would I need you to share with me your, your, your insight, right? And I'm like, uh, because I'm just another pair of eyes and I'm, yeah. I'm watching this thing. What kills me is that uh, when you watch TV, when you watch a movie, we all do that. We all do the armchair critic thing. We're like, oh, that was a terrible delivery, right? <laughs> and and we so. But what kills me is when if I was to say that to and I, by the way, there were people in my agency who are magnificent at taking the criticism and just going, thank you, you know. And that's such a great comment. But then there are other people who are like, uh, okay, cool, yeah, yeah, I'll I'll try that. <laughs> But it's yeah, it's gone. Like because it's it's the difference between hearing and listening again. Almost, I'm people tell you what they what you yeah. want to hear. I mean, we yeah. all do that. I mean, I I'd probably do the same. Where I'll be sitting there going, uh, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And meanwhile, I'm thinking, yeah, I don't yeah. Really that's not gonna happen. Yeah. So, uh, by the way, Nexus talent people, yeah. love you all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. So no, it, they, I mean, there really are. Uh, I cannot, I cannot tell a lie. I, I have uh, amazingly talented people that are on the roster. Yeah. Uh, many of them who are people I've been on stage with uh, and who have uh, immense amounts of talent and, uh, and not only immense amounts of talent, but uh, incredible professionalism. And uh, when, I, when I see a tape uh, from uh, those kind of people, I, I'm able to just go, these guys have what it takes, right? And and we all I gotta do is just keep pushing and pushing till somebody in Toronto takes notice. And we've had it. It's we've had a couple, right? There are some casting directors who are like dreams for me. And the fact that we were in COVID and we got auditions with these people makes me happier than anything. Like yeah. it's just getting the chance to audition for some of these people. They, I mean, they're doing, uh, well, uh, right, am I name dropping? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do some name dropping. Okay, let's do some name dropping. So Sarah Kay, yeah. who does The Boys, yeah. uh, she's up here right now. Uh, well, she's not up here, but she's she cast the Amazon series, uh, yeah. The Lake, which is being filmed in North Bay. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a, it's a short series, uh, but we had some people audition for it, which is great. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and I mean, it was hilarious. I mean, I, I, I called up Sarah on the phone. I don't know Sarah. All right. I, I, I know Sarah from the person who emails me and says, like to see Josh Bainbridge read for. That's it. But I, I don't have any. So I call her on the phone and I say, hey, you don't know me from a hole in the ground, but I'm uh, Rob coming from the Nexus Talent Group. And uh, I understand that you're filming an Amazon series up here. And I just wanted you to know that although you are looking at Toronto actors, we have an entire roster, 65 person actor roster up here in North Bay. From you for you to choose from, mm -hmm. and again, to Sarah was nice. Uh, she said, "Oh, absolutely, you know, we'll we'll keep an eye." Uh, but there was also that sense of when we come to the roles for the mail carrier number six, mm -hmm. then we'll we'll take a look. Mm -hmm. And and that, I'm just being honest. We we haven't cracked that nut yet, right? Mm -hmm. uh, another person is Robin Cook, yeah. who I have tremendous respect for. Uh, Robin does uh, Star Trek. Robin does one of my absolute favorite shows, The Expanse. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Robin, of course, is tied to John Papsidera, who does casting in Los Angeles. So cracking each of those nuts, having conversations with each of those people, which is something I've been doing and trying to do. Another one uh, who is uh, a super human being, and I say this because maybe he'll be watching, uh, he uh, and David Anselmo are currently working up here, Jason Knight is an absolutely fantastic person. He is, uh, he is the example of a person who could easily cross the street and never say a word to me because he's that guy. He, he cast Spotlight, the Academy Award winning mm -hmm. film. Mm -hmm. So when he calls me on the phone, to say uh, we're doing something in North Bay, or he he uh, we joke back and forth about the fact that I got hacked back in October. He's the first one to call me. He's like, "Yeah, hi, blah blah blah," and I'm like, "Hey, Jason, good to talk to you." And finally, he goes, "Yeah, Rob, I just want to let you know uh, I got an email from you, and uh, I think you've been hacked." Yeah. <laughs> and I'm thinking, but this guy didn't have to do that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so he's he's just super, and he's been really good, uh, and the people that work with him. Uh, have been excellent at staying in touch with me and stuff. That's so. amazing. That's amazing stuff. Yeah. And, it, and it shows just how much work goes on behind the scenes to make these things pop up on these yeah, magic you, screens we look at it. There's, there's a little bit of work that goes yeah, behind it. Yeah, there's a lot it. of work that goes behind it. Yeah. And it's a, and it's a fight to, to get seen. Yeah. Uh, it's a fight to get, uh, I mean, COVID made it such that we all had to audition through self tape. We couldn't walk in a room anymore. Mm -hmm. So I had to, Josh and I spent a lot of time talking about how do you win the room when you're on tape? Mm -hmm. Because you still have to win the room. Mm -hmm. uh, and some of them have had uh, Zoom auditions with Robin and yep. things like that. And I consider it a success when you audition for Robin and, uh, and you're in the room with her or on the Zoom with her for longer than two minutes. Mm -hmm. And I've had people do it. And I'm like, I'm not saying, you know, like, uh, and you're like dragging it out so that you have this. No, I mean, legitimately, yeah. they win the room over. And so there's conversation taking place and there's like some sort of transaction going on with these people. And I, all of a sudden, I'm like, the, you know, you had a three minute audition with Robin Cook. Yeah. Like, you're, you're lucky. Yeah, you know, most people get thirty seconds. It sounds yeah. like you. It sounds like you really love what you're doing and what you're building. As my last question, I want us to talk about. What am I quitting? No, <laughs> the opposite. <laughs> so you're going to paint us a picture of the next five years and how this is just the beginning of what we're starting. You're just at the beginning. Of I am. This yeah. Um, how are we going to crack those nuts? How are we going to make the phone calls? It's legitimate phone. See what it what it takes in this industry. Uh, and, and the actors would, would agree, uh, the directors, all, all, anybody who works in this industry, you have to have balls of steel and you have to have a thick skin. And so you, you, it's like uh, when, I, when I was a teenager and thinking about, you know, you're going to call the girl on the phone and you're like, you walk up to the phone and you pick it up and you're like, and then you slam yeah. it back down again. 
you can't slam the phone down. You've got to say to yourself, today's the day I'm going to call Sarah Kay on the phone and I'm going to talk to Sarah Kay. And it's not that Sarah Kay is sitting at the other end of the line saying, I am untouchable. I have made her untouchable. I've made Robin Cook untouchable. Just like you made the girlfriend untouchable, right? Yeah. She, she's never going to talk to me. So yeah. you, you present that perception to yourself and you become afraid. And the, the, more, the more people I reach out to, the less afraid I get to call the next person, to yeah. call the next person. It's like working out a muscle. You're getting it stronger and stronger. It's by exactly it. Yeah. You're, I get to the point where I, I've just gotten confident about if the person says, yeah, uh, you know, don't call us, we'll call you. I don't take that personally because my job as an agent, yeah. it's funny. I mean, I think about shows like Entourage and stuff, right? Yeah. Your job as an agent is to be the guy who pisses people off kind of like <laughs> because you're trying to get people the best deal you're trying yeah. to get them the best job so i'm going to be the guy who's going to be a thorn in uh, in somebody's side like uh even actra for right. example i'm going to say we got 65 people on my roster there's also um there are, what are there, darren there are three other agencies in northern ontario hmm. I, at least i think yeah yeah and I, these agencies have equally talented people. Yeah. And I want ACTRA to have a Northern chapter because why shouldn't they? Sure. Like why, why are, when we go to, down to uh, Toronto to audition and it's like Toronto locals only, but when we're auditioning up here, it doesn't say Northern locals only. Instead, mm -hmm. it's kind of like, yeah, we're gonna audition Toronto people, and uh, if we have a couple of roles left over for uh, Northern people, we'll get we'll we'll, uh, so we'll we'll give them. So what you're saying is fearlessness in terms of yeah. busting down the door to to say, hey, we're here and we're as good, and this is what we're, we're doing, and good. we have experience. That's the key. We are as good. I will stack up, like I'll stack up a Josh Bainbridge and a Kelsey Rule. I'll stack right. those guys up against people in Toronto for any sure. day of the week. Me too. Name and, dropping. Yeah, <laughs> but. Uh, so, so we can stack up, we have experience and we have a good future ahead of us, I think. Yeah. And once I retire, I'll be able to give it every single, like when I retire as a teacher, which is three years, I'll give it everything I got. I'm already giving it everything I got. That's I'm excellent. probably giving it more than I should. <laughs> Sorry, near North School Board, but uh, this no, is more fun. No, yeah. the passion, yeah. the passion. We all have to yeah. follow our passion. Yeah, and it just kind of, as soon as I got it, I, you know, and it, and it's, it helps, of course, having Josh with mm -hmm. me, who's able to just say, hey, man, that's a cool idea. Or, good Go good idea it. with the spreadsheet, you know, like that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, it really yeah, yeah. helps. That's amazing. Yeah. I can't thank you enough for coming in. Really, it's, it's so awesome happy to talk met. about it. It's I so, me, I'm it, like, I think I actually believe this shit. <laughs> no, you do. You make it sound. I believe you. I do. Yeah. And I love. What you know, you see it and you do believe it. If yeah. you would have said 15 years ago there were going to be Main Street right now in the middle of summer would be decorated as a Christmas like a set, Christmas. and that yeah. the whole city is in on it because it is because it does take quite a few hands to make yeah. this stuff work and there is so much work in money and everybody and like and after covid is people. just so excited it, it's people so are like exciting. oh make a movie make a movie yeah, let's you know? make a movie yeah. yeah so yeah and your role though as a ta without a talent agent without those services that back everything up yeah. it's not possible yeah so thanks for stepping up and doing what you're doing i mean it's awesome thanks, because thanks I believe, to jim thanks to jim clarko because i wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't if it wasn't for jim i wouldn't be doing it yeah thank so. you jim he is a real leader in the community yeah. too um yeah thanks is there anything else we should be making sure people know that we should be plugging what if people want to get a hold of you and they're like oh my god rob i can't act. i can't just call him he's, <laughs> he's got that big website with all the famous <laughs> if people actors want to know, who are maybe, working to, on the field yeah, so, the, so how do they email get email address attention? is uh rob yep mc nexus yep at outlook.com it's that simple rob mc nexus at outlook.com and let's put the link to your website there at the bottom what is it www.nexustalentgroup.com yeah it's all, all rolled together ladies yeah. and gentlemen go see rob check in on what he's yeah. doing encourage him and let's like build this thing out for the next you know 10 years and if you know rob and cook <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you know Sarah Kay or Robin Cook, let me know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. no, but I mean, you never know, right? Like that's the thing. You like, never I, know. I, I have a teacher friend who's uh, who's friends with a, a Stratford actor, or her, her uh, his mother 
is like best friends with one of these Stratford actors that I absolutely adore, right? And I'm like, uh, yeah, next time she's over for dinner, uh, invite me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's no, about it's, the networking. It is, and 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 it's also about that fearlessness, you know. Like yeah. I, I totally, I, I would love to meet these people. Yeah. They seem so great. I mean, Lisa Parazin's another one, right? She did Shit's Creek, and uh, she's Huge currently and she's currently casting a uh, a film. Uh, sorry, not a film, but a series uh, based on. Um, Dan Brown's Lost Symbol. Yeah. It was originally called Langdon. It's called The Lost yeah. Symbol. So, you know, when the, when they write back and they say, yeah, yeah, we'd like to see uh, Morgan Bedard. We'd like to see... I'm, I'm like, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's really wonderful. Keep and it up. Thanks. Keep doing it. Thank you. You're going to have a crowd of people behind you <laughs> pushing on. Yeah, then I'll, be, then I'll be the guy who's like, hey, okay, we can't use you. The yeah, next yeah. Oh, well, has become too big the, for you. So cross right. that bridge when you get there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, that's that's awesome. Thanks Great. for coming in, and let's Great. do it again because there's going to be more updates. There will be more. Are be changing yeah. nonstop. I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. It'll Thanks, Rob. Thanks, okay. Darren, for Thank again. You. Thanks, like, Darren. Hooking this up. Yeah. Make the room sound like it's bigger. Darren, <laughs> man. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Subscribe to the channel. We'll mm -hmm. see you soon. Ciao for now.